Hi, I'm Richard Ayuad, one of the most consistently disappointing people around, and I am here on one of my many balconies, uh, this time in Poland, and I'm here to read you an extract from my new book, Ayuad on Top, which will be available wherever good literature is sold, or perhaps it is already available. I don't know when you're listening or watching this. I don't know your lives, and that gladdens me. Um, I would take my hat off, but I am currently playing the young George Michael um, in a new film. Uh, we're hoping it's going to be the new bow rap, and I'm, I'm worried that the frosted tips will distract from the pros. If you'll start the also queue now, thank you very much. There's no one there. 2003 was a clustered year at the box office, vying alongside the soon-to-be seminal Kangaroo Jack, Bruce Almighty and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days were the comedies Just Married, Dickie Roberts, former child star, and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. More intellectually challenging fare like Bad Boys 2, Jeepers Creepers 2 and Scary Movie 3 duked it out with future classics Freddy vs Jason and The Matrix Reloaded, while pastoral works like The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King and Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl crushed it both commercially and financially. Perhaps it was the sheer quality of 2003's output that meant a smaller film like Bruno Barreto's View from the Top, budgeted at a mere $30 million, struggled to make its mark. It was too subtle, too provocative, too countercultural for its time. Here was a film that dared a pre-Trump America to believe in itself again with its exaltation to work like hell, play like hell, and take responsibility like hell even when it wasn't really your fault. This was an unashamedly cerebral film, starring that icon of third-wave feminism, Gwyneth Paltrow, in an English-language dramedy that charts the highs and lows of Donna Jensen, a small-town girl from the wrong side of the tracks, as she pursues her dream of becoming an air stewardess. Here was a protest against the narrative of victimhood that has come to pervade today's complaint culture. If you want to succeed, the film bravely asserts, put on a short skirt and go into the service industry. It won't be long before you're picked out for even greater things, like higher paid work within the service industry. Because if you're hot, you'll reach the top. And if you're a little heavy or have a squinty eye, maybe you can work behind the scenes where you won't spook anyone. This book, in its own modest way, hopes to rehabilitate a work that Paltrow has disowned as a money job, as opposed to more meaningful films in which you get to play emotionally brittle mathematicians. As a prominent star of screens both small and large, I know only too well the impulse to play down one's more populist gifts. It's far easier to feign interest in independent cinema, which will soon be filmed and viewed solely on its natural platform, the smartphone, than to shine a light, perhaps using the torch function on that same smartphone, on those parts of ourselves that are vulnerable, hard to find and frequently raw. It's better to hide in the comfort of the snot cry, the drunken scream, and the hollow-eyed, oh, the humanity shower slide, than to commit to the nuances of a comic montage showing small improvements over time. Top is a rare, breathless work of honesty, directness, and integrity, a film that celebrates capitalism in all its victimless glory, and one I can imagine Donald Trump himself half-watching on his private jet's gold-plated flat screen, while his other puffy eye scans the cabin for young, fresh prey.